you're watching Force 13's live streaming service. Welcome to Force 13 Live. There are a plethora of storms active right now that we are looking at across the world over. The main feature, of course, being Hurricane Matthew. Most of the warnings out for that at the minute. It is on the verge of Category 3 status. There's one of the latest images there on your screen. Um, my name's Nathan Foy. I'm here with you for the next hour at least, and we'll be talking about everything that's going on out there at the moment. We'll be fielding your questions, and uh, hopefully we'll have enough time for that, because the amount of time it's going to take to get through all of the latest storm information is going to be quite some time by the looks of things, because we've got all of this going on. There's Leslie moving through the Atlantic. That could be heading towards Europe. Sergio, not looking so great in those recent frames. Uh, still barely holding on to hurricane status. Um, and then likely to move on towards the uh, coast of the Baja California Peninsula. Well, I'll turn myself off so you don't have to see me anymore. There's Michael on the forecast track. Expected to reach Category 3 status. The National Hurricane Center expects a peak of 125 miles per hour shortly before its landfall point. The bad news is, well, if it wasn't bad enough, that is, the bad news that's worsening appears to be that the storm will make landfall somewhere near Panama City and possibly to the west of there even. And if that was to happen, then the worst of the surge will then go on to affect those particular areas. Um, as it is right now, we're expecting, uh, the National Hurricane Center are expecting up to 12 feet of storm surge, 8 to 12 feet for Indian Pass to Cedar Key. Um, 6 to 8 feet from Cedar Key to Crystal River, six to nine feet at the Oskaloosa Walton County line to Indian Pass, Crystal River to Arupeka, Florida, four to six feet, Arupeka to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay, two to four feet, and the Alabama Florida border to the Okaloosa Walton County line at two to four feet. There's the estimated time of arrival. The uh, map is really zoomed out, so it's difficult to see. But Wednesday morning is the most likely arrival time for tropical storm force winds in the expected landfall area. Uh, there's some model runs from earlier on. Michael is a pretty open and closed case, to be honest, when we're looking at the track forecast. We pretty much know where it's going to go. Um, it's just a few miles here and there that could make a difference when it comes to that landfall. Uh, there's Leslie, by the way. What a mess that one is. There's three schools of thought on that one. Some models take it to Western Europe. Other models take it to the Canary Islands. Others still take it back on a U-turn. And the GFS is back on board with a U-turn. Back over the Central Atlantic. Goodness me. 17th day of Leslie. There's Hurricane Sergio. Um, pretty clear on what the forecast track will do on that one as well. Um, whilst we're just looking at all of this, we may as well just go through everything that I've pre-prepared. This is the forecast models for Luban. Uh, I think that is just the GFS ensembles, though, so that could be a bit misleading. Some other models take it further south. It may not make landfall in Oman at all, and as a matter of fact, the GFS has it not making landfall in Oman anymore, just over the border in Yemen. There's the Atlantic picture right now, Nadine, the newest named storm in the Atlantic, likely to be a fairly short-lived system, a fairly weak system in the eastern Atlantic, won't get any further than that. There's the eastern Pacific scene, Sergio there is the only game in town as it stands. The central Pacific will show up next and that will show you absolutely nothing because it's very quiet over there, I think they've had their fair share of storms this year. And on the left-hand panel, you can see every now and again a few of those storms going by. Um, just a note, Michael, for the rainfall risk, you can see it all at the bottom there, but if you just missed it, scroll past. Western Cuba, 4 to 8 inches of rain expected with isolated maximum amounts of 12. Obviously, that most of the event is over there in Cuba. The Florida Panhandle and the Big Bend, southeast Alabama and southern Georgia, 4 to 8 inches with isolated maximum amounts of 12. 
eastern Georgia, the Carolinas and southern Virginia to expect three to six inches of rain, which could lead to life-threatening flash floods. And the Florida Peninsula, the eastern Mid-Atlantic and southern New England, one to three inches. There's the wind probabilities on your screen right now as well. Tropical storm force winds, that is. Hurricane conditions also likely in some of those other locations as well. Um... So that's pretty much everything to do with Michael there. Of course, the warnings, which I didn't read out at the start, in case you haven't seen them, a hurricane warning for the Alabama-Florida border to uh, Suwannee River, Florida, a tropical storm warning for the Alabama-Florida border to the Mississippi-Alabama border, and the Suwannee River, Florida to Chesahowitzka, Florida, a tropical storm watch for Chesahowitzka to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay, the Mississippi-Alabama border to the mouth of the Pearl River, and Fernandina Beach, Florida, to the South Sante River, South Carolina. I'm sick of saying that last one because they've been under warnings for so many occasions in the last two years. Um, storm surge warning for the Okaloosa-Walton County line, Florida, to Anclote River, and a storm surge watch for Anclote River to Anna Maria Island, and the Alabama-Florida border to the Okaloosa-Walton County line. You're looking at Cyclone Titley on the screen right now. That storm has formed very recently in the Bay of Bengal. That storm will be going on to affect India. Could be a severe cyclone for them as well. So we've got the whole world engulfed in tropical activity apart from the traditional active part of the world, the Western Pacific. Um, nothing going on over there, and we can be thankful at least for that. All right, then, let's take a look at the latest imagery on Michael. This is almost up-to-the-minute imagery. The last image on this loop was at 4 o'clock UTC on the dot. That's 11, sorry, 12 noon. So this imagery is 7 minutes old at this point, which isn't too bad. Um, again, you can just see on the eastern side... Just struggling a little bit with that eye, and I'm not convinced that that's a complete eye wall. We've been looking at a similar situation to this all night, really, overnight into the morning hours. And it is very much indicative of a storm on the verge of major hurricane status, but it just has to close off that eye a little bit more before they'll call it a major hurricane or until they'll find major hurricane estimates we expect as a general rule of thumb on satellite imagery maybe that this could be an exception but it looks like that eye is just about getting ready to seal off although we were saying that at the end of our show last night at about 9 p.m eastern so it hasn't changed very much since then what has changed though is the northwestern side much more convection this afternoon than there was last night um and that is surely a cause for concern maybe a sign that the wind field is growing it is now a stage four on the cdps scale stage four meaning extensive damage is likely for any land areas that end up under the storm that could rise further maybe the stage five or six florence for example may landfall as a stage five on the cdps scale that's the cyclone destruction potential scale developed by our team member Devon Williams in 2016. It's a fantastic scale and um, it, it factors in not only the storm's strength but its wind field, its forward motion and in his new model which will I hope be out soon um, it's also going to factor in rainfall probabilities uh, so it will become hopefully the most accurate tool out there. But nonetheless that is what we're looking at right now. The National Hurricane Center's advisory, 110 miles per hour, a pressure of 965 millibars, 25 north, 86.2 west as of 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, 11, of course, in the east. Uh, I expect the next update will be due in two hours' time, and we'll see what it says then. Probably won't be too much of a change unless we see some significant intensification now last night I uh, at the end of the show towards the end of the show I said that by this morning as it is now um, we whatever we saw by morning there is probably still time for the storm to gain another category before landfall so based on that estimate I would 
suggests that the storm will probably peak at 125 miles per hour. That's what the National Hurricane Center's forecast is saying. And uh, there was a time, two occasions, yesterday and the day before, where we're really run wondering whether the system was really getting some rapid intensification going. I know it did at the beginning, but another phase, but it's really not caught on. That could be some good news. Um, because we really could have been seeing a, a mid to high range Category 3 by now. As it stands, it's a high end Category 2, just short of Category 3 wins. Um, let me just see if I can get some more information with regards, Michael. Uh, well, let me just read out the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. Um, Life threatening storm surge is likely along portions of the coast of the Florida Panhandle, Big Bend and Nature Coast and a storm surge warning is in effect for these areas. Water levels will rise well in advance of the center of Michael and residents within the storm surge warning area should finish preparations and protect to protect life and property today. Everyone in the hurricane warning area along the Florida Gulf Coast should prepare for life-threatening major hurricane winds associated with the core of Michael. Hurricane force winds will also extend well inland across portions of the Florida Panhandle, southern Georgia and southeast Alabama as Michael moves inland. Heavy rainfall from Michael could produce life-threatening flash flooding from the Florida Panhandle and Big Bend region into portions of Georgia and South Carolina and Michael is expected to produce heavy rainfall and flash flooding over portions of western Cuba over the next day or so. Not seeing much evidence of that anymore, but we'll take their word for it. So let me just take a look at some of the other products that we've got here in depth. So here is another look at the latest image there of Michael on some other imageries. Um, we'll show you some visible in a little while as well. It certainly looks the part on visible. Not quite there on the infrared. There's Leslie, uh, not looking so hot. <laughs> Dry air off to the west being a bit of a hindrance. Sergio as mentioned previously but I want to take you to the track of Hurricane Michael here, the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, they're expecting landfall during the day, possibly early afternoon hours now on Wednesday. So we're really looking at 24 hours from now until the storm really starts to reach land, until the hurricane conditions arrive perhaps. Um, it could conceivably happen a little bit earlier than that. Depends on how fast the storm starts moving. 12 miles per hour at present. Um, I can't remember what the numbers were in the update, but I think... No, can't quite remember how far it was from land. I was just going to think about maybe calculating an extrapolation. Wouldn't work anyway because the storm is expected to accelerate and then move inland, <coughs> curve towards the northeast, and then turn post-tropical over maybe Thursday evening, maybe early on Friday. As it moves over the um, Florence-ravaged parts of the U.S. East Coast and then out over off the coast of New England and over towards Atlantic Canada as a post-tropical cyclone later on in the week into the weekend. Uh, this is Leslie, in case you were wondering. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty about this still. I would say only the next three days are, um, you know, a, a good confidence forecast <clears throat> up until Friday. Could be a threat to the Azores still. Could be a threat to Madeira. Could be a threat to the Canary Islands. Could be a threat to the Iberian Peninsula. Goodness me. Leslie's been around, I think it is, for 17 days. And might be another five on the way. According to the GFS model, it may still be around in 10 days. Well, we'll see about that. The models are flipping around with it. There's Sergio once more. Expected to make landfall on Friday morning local time on the Baja California Peninsula before moving inland over Mexico. Looks like its effects in the United States will be limited. It will certainly be much weaker by the time it gets to the coast of Mexico, never mind, over the border. 
And this is probably what a lot of people would be curious to see around this time. The Tropical Storm Force wind speed probabilities. Now the darkest color there, the central color, showing the very high chances that the coast of Florida has of tropical storm conditions near 100% in some of those locations. In fact, let me get some actual numbers from the National Hurricane Center as I leave that graphic up for you to look at. So, all the way up in Newfoundland, Cape Race, 22% uh, chance of tropical storm force winds. Isle St. Pierre, 19. Um, Eddy Point, Nova Scotia, 7%. Sydney, Nova Scotia, 12. Sable Island, 34%. Halifax, 8. Yarmouth, 11. Hyannis, Massachusetts, I think, 11. Nanticoke, 15. Um, going towards New York, uh, well, I don't see many locations there anymore. New York City was at 3% yesterday. They've now put it down probably to negligible. Uh, but Philadelphia, 3%. Atlantic City, 6 Let's move further south. Ocean City, Maryland, 26%. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, 19 Norfolk, 39%. Raleigh, North Carolina, 37 Cape Hatteras, 46 So Oh gosh, not these areas again. Fayetteville, 56%. Quite high. Charlotte, North Carolina, 30%. Moorhead City, 48%. Surf City 51, Wilmington 51, Florence 62% chance of tropical storm force winds, Columbia, South Carolina 61, Myrtle Beach 51, Georgetown 49, South Carolina, Charleston 48, Atlanta, Georgia 33%. Uh, though if the storm deviates to the north a little bit, that those percentages chances will go up quite a bit for Atlanta. Augusta 66, Savannah 53, Jacksonville, Florida 43% chance, Daytona Beach 20, Orlando 17, Key West 3 now, Naples 5, Fort Myers 7, Tampa 24%, Cedar Key 58% chance of tropical storm conditions, Tallahassee 97, may as well call it 100. St. Mark's 96, Apalachicola 99, Panama City 99, Destin 99, Columbus 73, that's in Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama 13%, Montgomery 50%, uh, Pensacola 79, quite high chances over there as well, hurricane warning, Mobile, Alabama 26%, Gulfport, Mississippi 11 uh, New Orleans 7%, even Morgan City with 5%, but I don't think anything's going to occur there. You can see on the uh, graphic there as well, the wind field, the orange area there, uh, most of the winds are displaced to the east, uh, which is quite curious. Uh, you wouldn't think that if you weren't um, well versed on tropical cyclones, uh, because if you look at the actual imagery, it's the northwestern side that has the biggest bulk of the convection uh, but usually mainly because of the storm's movement north the northeastern quadrant has the strongest winds and the largest wind field so again we're looking at this automatically updating imagery it now goes up to 10 pass so that's eight minutes ago and you can see the eye swiveling around there still developing at this point Strengthening, maybe, and we're just seeing, it reminds me of last night actually. Just as we were finishing the stream last night, the eastern side, we saw two little flare-ups occurring, just like we're seeing in those latest frames there. And that certainly means the convection is going to continue. But it is really straddling the border between category 2 and 3. If you have any questions for us whilst we're on the air in this hour, start your message with Force 13 all in text and we will respond, as long as it's a sensible question. Uh, there was one or two earlier. Someone telling me that Leslie is just a mess. <laughs> a little bit. Could strengthen to a hurricane though. 
will we make a Hurricane Michael animation? Well, who knows? And a lot of people, or some people, shouting at me about Storm Callum, which isn't an official name. <laughs> well, it, it, was, it depends who you go by. The Met Office, I'm guessing. Is that the Met Office naming list? The uh, extra tropical cyclones in the North Atlantic, I don't follow it closely at all because the Met Office has no criteria for naming those systems, which really seemed pretty redundant to me. So I don't listen to it, but I, I, uh, I gather there's a windstorm coming to the British Isles this week, but, well, I'm not really here to talk about that despite living here, but we're looking at Michael because it is a much larger threat to a much larger amount of real estate, I suppose, and give you an idea of how large this system is. The wind field in Michael, the latest from the National Hurricane Center, extends out 160 miles, nautical miles, to the northeast, and uh, 140 nautical miles to the northwest. So when we get into the early hours of tomorrow, we'll be looking at them numbers, and we'll be ticking down the numbers to landfall as well, no doubt, as the storm continues to draw near and it could be feasible that tropical storm conditions could be felt first thing tomorrow morning it really depends on the speed of this storm the timing is going to be the most uncertain aspect of the track forecast I'll leave you with this imagery for just a moment whilst I return with some more information This is Force 13 Live with the latest on Hurricane Michael and everything else going on in the Atlantic right now. Michael has winds of 110 miles per hour and a pressure of 965 millibars moving north at 12 miles per hour. Looking pretty decent. Also we've got Leslie, Tropical Storm Leslie which is expected to reach hurricane status once again. What on earth has Leslie been on? <laughs> Quite an adventure in the last two weeks plus. Not looking so hot on the satellite as we discussed. Sergio headed towards the coast of Mexico. Let's just uh, scoot back here again. Um, okay, that was an empty panel. Oh no, it's full now. Uh, Luban. Cyclone Luban is headed towards the Arabian Peninsula. There's the latest JTWC warning graphic showing how the storm is expected to reach hurricane equivalent status before weakening again and moving in towards Yemen in the end. Um, if you take this JTWC warning map, it's saying that nowhere in Oman will receive tropical storm conditions, which is interesting. Um, but Yemen could uh, see a significant storm impact as it continues to move towards that area. It's been moving a little bit towards the northwest in those last few hours, but really I don't feel the movement has been enough to justify an, a prediction for an Oman landfall, and I don't think any of the models actually say a landfall there anymore. The GFS still holding on to tropical storm force winds as it just darts to the south of Salalah, but the landfall location is just over the border in Yemen so that is pretty interesting indeed if you've got questions about this storm we're happy to take those as well and also on cyclone Titli which formed in the Bay of Bengal today the Indian Meteorological Department naming this a little bit earlier on and it's looking pretty good I have to say um, a very large moist system uh, headed north towards the northern part of India. I forget the province names up there towards Andhra Pradesh, I believe and Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue I'll have to come back to it and then perhaps towards Bangladesh later on as well So there's another one out there And there we are again with some more images of Michael. Let's see if we can now get some visible imagery of the storm which will take a few seconds to load whilst I leave you with this for now let's see if we can take a look at this 
So these are some visible images that are slowly starting to appear on the screen. It's a bit like a jigsaw, putting itself together slowly but surely. Uh, but you can see how the storm's been looking. Now, visible imagery always flatters to deceive. But it's almost warranting its vis uh, visible appearance. That eye wall is pretty much complete. There's just a very small fracture in it by the looks of things. And it really has to bolden up that southern part of the eye wall if it's really going to intensify. Let's hope not. And you, you can also see that band extending out off to the east, just lingering off the western coast of Florida. Uh, generally pretty decent conditions over Florida at this particular moment. Some light clouds, the main bulk of the storm still quite a bit offshore shouldn't be affecting the southern part of Florida. Then it really depends on how much it's going to... you may notice in its movement there. It is still moving in a general, what appears to me, a just west of north direction. Yeah, I would say so, looking at that imagery. And as long as it continues going west of north, then the more risk will be piled on to places like Panama City, Pensacola, and other locations in between and even inland as well. Even, as I said before, Atlanta, Georgia, if the storm edges a bit further to the west, it could mean a more further, a further north track later on down the line, and more chance for tropical storm force winds in Atlanta, and many other uh, similar situations for other locations. Of course, if it was to deviate east, I would hesitate to say it would be a better case scenario because it would be affecting some other locations worse, but obviously further east than Panama City and Apalachicola, you've got the Bend region, which is pretty sparsely populated. And at the moment, that is where the really huge surge amounts could be seen, up to 12 feet in some of those areas. I think it was in between Indian Pass and Cedar Key, I think it said earlier. That is certainly a, a cause for concern, and then you move further towards the northeast, a rainfall threat. All right, let's see if we've got any more questions at this point. Start your message with Force 13 all in text. How's Leslie? Healthy? Question mark. Um, not massively. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. There's a lot going on here. Um, chances for Category 4 on Michael. Well, you can uh, at the bottom of the screen every so often we show the percentage chances that we think for the time being. We're giving it 40% because we're expecting it to reach 125 miles per hour, which is just shy of Category 4, so just less than half chance, we would say, for Category 4 status. Fingers crossed that won't happen. What are we expecting from Nadine? We haven't been talking about it. It has been mentioned more than once already, actually. But Nadine isn't expected to do very much at all, although it could slightly influence Leslie. Expected to be a weak tropical storm in the eastern Atlantic certainly won't be affecting any land areas. But yes, we haven't managed to muster the imagery to be able to show you Nadine, um, but I suppose that's probably not really worth showing in light of everything else we've got around the world. Chances of a high-end Category 3 or low-end Category 4 for Michael, as I said just a moment ago, most likely. Do you think that a lot of people don't have the time to evacuate? That's quite a pertinent question, because... Um, you know, this storm, there's been a, a lower lead time. With Florence, we saw the th well, some models saw the thing coming 10 days out. People knew that it could have been a threat with a 10-day lead time, and they definitely knew five or six days out. With this one, we've only had about a 48-hour lead time, to be honest. I think they put out the hurricane warnings something like 36 hours 
The Hurricane watches even, 36 hours, and quite often they do that three days beforehand these days. Um, so yeah, the lead time has been much lower. Um, the mandatory evacuations went out for a lot of those areas that we expect to be in the landfall zone yesterday. I don't know if any more have gone out today, but no doubt those areas um, around Panama City, east and west of there, particularly east around the bend, should be evacuating, especially if it's low-lying on the coast or exposed. Um, whether they had the time to evacuate, I don't know. Not knowing the specifics about those areas, the infrastructure, the road links. Um, I, I really don't know if 36 hours is enough for everyone and whether what, what the mood is on the ground, whether people are staying despite what we're seeing right now. If anyone does have any observations on the ground, either social or actually related to the storm, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, can Michael do a turn for New Orleans? That's an, another question that just got sent to me. Um, really, no. <laughs> no, it's not going to do that. Slightly the curve towards the east. Um, I'm. It, it's due to a system over there in Texas as well. I think that's probably going to influence it to push towards the northeast. Um, a pretty common scenario that we've got, um, especially at this time of year, towards the close of the Atlantic hurricane season, at least this far north, you tend to see storms in the Gulf, at least, curving towards the northeast and then out towards <clears throat> the mid-Atlantic and this one we expect won't be much difference the only I mean that the you know it's still moving just west of north at this time if you were to extrapolate that track it would take it somewhere near New Orleans but there's still a very long way until it reaches land and it will be influenced long before then I expect that turn that west of north motion I mean National Hurricane Center is saying due north I think it's still slightly west of north but that should end by later on today and then you'll see a gradual curve towards the east but you know those locations from Alabama onwards into Florida could be concerned about tropical storm force winds but 5% chance for New Orleans for tropical storm force winds in any case as we continue to look at the updating imagery and uh, it's very curious what's happening in those latest frames it's sort of looking like there's maybe two eye walls in the bottom part there trying to make sense of it on air myself isn't doing very well um, but another very small flare-up of convection just to the east of the eye that might continue to blow up over the next few hours Michael still on the verge of Category 3 status and further strengthening is expected. Let's just go to the National Hurricane Center's discussion to find out what their reasoning is. I'll just read this out. Um, continue to become better organized this morning, um, as you can see. Pressure down to 965 millibars from uh, Hurricane Hunters, and they've gone with 95 knots which is 110 miles per hour and the planes passed through the eye at around the same time fascinating they said they could see one another according to the National Hurricane Center's update uh, the outflow pattern has become better established over the hurricane but there is still a little evidence of some westerly shear the shear should continue to decrease and further strengthening is expected until landfall on Wednesday so that's interesting, that their wording, that they're saying that landfall, uh, strengthening up until landfall, which I'm um, very intrigued to see. Because usually storms do weaken a little bit before landfall, especially up there in the northern Gulf Coast, as Hank has said on many occasions in the past. I'm uh, just trying to find anything in relation to the eye structure, but I'm not actually seeing anything that they're saying in relation to that so I guess we'll leave it there but we're just left with our eyeballs as we continue to look at what the storm is trying to pull 
Let's see if we can take a look at some different infrared imagery, the one that we quite often use here. Let's see what, how it's actually looking on here. You may be more familiar with this imagery because we show it very often on our streams. Still lacking depth in, in the eye. It's still in a structuring phase at the minute by the looks of things and I certainly wouldn't give it category 3 status based on the satellite imagery alone now I don't know if recon flights are getting any news on this because I'm unable to look at it whilst I'm on the air here because I'm having to present to you everything else but on satellite imagery alone you can't really give category 3 unless you see that eye wall close off fully and maybe just a little bit more depth in the eye but really very very close to reaching category 3 status not that it matters very much it already is almost at that intensity only 5 miles an hour separates it from category 3 status and whether or not it gets there it most likely will later on in the day give you an idea of our schedule for the rest of today um, we are live again later I'm not actually sure what time we're supposed to be back here I was just uh, formulating the schedule earlier let's see if we can just find that for you so yes we'll be live again at the same time as we were last night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time there'll be another update on Michael at 5 p.m. Eastern Time and an update on Luban at 12 a.m. Gulf Standard Time after we're finished here at the end of this hour. To reiterate those warnings again for Michael, it's the only storm that there's warnings for at the minute, although they are advising Oman and India at this time. Couldn't find any actual concrete warnings, but obviously um, I would suggest a tropical storm warning should be in effect for some of those Indian provinces. Um, and of course rainfall will probably be a big threat there as well. But for Michael, a storm surge warning for the Okaloosa Walton County line to Antelope River, Florida. A storm surge watch for Antelope River to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay and the Al Alabama Florida border to the Okaloosa Walton County line. A hurricane warning for the Alabama Florida border to Sewanee River, Florida. A tropical storm warning for the Alabama Florida border to the Mississippi Alabama border and Sewanee River, Florida to Chassahowitzka, Florida. A tropical storm watch for Chassahowitzka to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay. The Mississippi Alabama border to the mouth of the Pearl River and Fernandina Beach to the South Sante River, South Carolina. So many warnings out there and they'll continue to expand over the next few days as long as this storm is still fighting and we do expect that it will remain tropical as it enters the, the uh, Carolinas and possibly even as it emerges back over the Atlantic in around four days time. Let's bring us back to the latest uh, in fact the likely arrival times for Michael once again in case you've not seen this graphic yet and just for some of those more distant locations there for reference Thursday for most of the Carolinas although it could be Wednesday night in southern South Carolina Thursday night into Friday for the mid-Atlantic region and late Friday into Saturday for Atlantic Canada won't be tropical by then but could still have Tropical storm force winds. Um, okay, let's see if we've got any more questions at this time. Which storms can be compared to Michael? And don't tell me someone just answered Katrina. No, not Katrina. Not by any stretch of the imagination. No matter how crazy your imagination might well be. Um, no, this storm is probably most comparable to Opal really it's not a particularly good comparison but very few storms in the month of October have made landfall in the Florida Panhandle as a major hurricane the last one was Opal the one before then was in 1921 <laughs> so we've got a lot of history between that and Opal being the most recent out of a very short list 
so really we're sort of stuck with Opal for our only comparison but Opal was much stronger than this storm is expected to be. How will dry air impact the storm? Well you know I have been looking at that time and again just to see if it was really infiltrating the storm at all on the water vapor imagery if we could possibly get some on the screen you just saw a quick glimpse it looks to me as though the dry air over there in the gulf to the west is being staved off staved away by the storm but this shows it quite well actually the structure of the eastern side of the eye not yet complete with that eye wall that is the main inhibitor preventing it from reaching category 3 status and uh, another answer there about Wilma comparing it to Michael in a way making landfall in Florida as a major hurricane in the month of October no less but uh, that one was much further south after reaching a category 5 peak in the energetic Caribbean Sea this storm didn't have the chance to do much of that at, at, at all um, and isn't going to southern Florida. Wilma didn't go to the Panhandle. Opal, the last October storm to reach the Florida Panhandle as a major hurricane, makes it the best analog also formed in the Gulf. Well, this storm actually didn't form in the Gulf. It formed over near the Yucatan, but most of its development occurred as it was going through the Yucatan Channel, as storms often do. But again, the bulk of the storm to the northwest there, that big blow up of convection. Let's return us back to the latest imagery here. And if you've been watching for the whole 40 minutes so far that we've been here, you can see how it's been progressing since we started the show. That big flare up, small flare up, getting bigger, still occurring. And more of the eye becoming visible in those late frames. This imagery is very new, almost up to the minute. The most recent image on this was seven minutes ago. So it looks like we've got about a seven minute delay. You won't find much better out there. And it all adds up in the end, I suppose. Still trying to discern what that is on the southern side. It's it doesn't look like two eye walls. I think it's just what we're looking at on the satellite. And do wonder whether there might be just another small fracture there on that southwestern side as well. Still a bit of work to do as it joins up that eye wall. But if that happens, it's got a 24 hour window then of further intensification, perhaps rapid. And that and that then you could see its potential for reaching category 4 status. Can this be as strong as Harvey but not stationary? Well it's a very odd question that you ask there. Um, just finding any reason to compare it to Harvey I suppose. Um, it really isn't a Harvey. It's not likely to be as strong. It's not likely to be as large. It's not likely to stall. It certainly won't stall. Its effects will be much less than Harvey, no matter what happens, unless it becomes a 175 mile an hour Category 5, but no one is mad enough to predict anything close to that. So, rest assured that it won't be as bad as Harvey, although that's not saying much. Um, one or two people speculating there that the eye is becoming larger. I'm not quite so sure that that's the case. It's just that more of the eye is becoming visible to the satellite. It's clearing out a little bit. Uh, you need to remember quite often that the, uh, the convection, the thunderstorms above the eye, can often cloud it out. Not so much cloud out the eye, but obscure it from, of course, the observing satellite. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Um, will Leslie miss a trough and return west as some of the models show? National Hurricane Center doesn't want to think that's going to happen yet. I would reserve just judgment for the minute. I think it would be a fool, a fool's errand even, 
to predict what's going to happen with Leslie. It's been so unpredictable so far. Just may as well give up and go home on that one. Is this hurricane big or small compared to other hurricanes? It's about sort of average. It's almost as, actually, it's almost, in terms of wind field, it's just a little bit smaller than Florence. Um, at least in its largest quadrants. A little bit smaller than Florence, uh, so sort of the lower end of average in terms of storm size. The thing is, with smaller storms, that means that intensification can happen more rapidly, but so can the opposite. It can capitulate and die very rapidly as well, with a smaller storm than this, probably. But with a storm like Michael, you know, um, I don't think we're going to see anything other than a major hurricane threat, and if it does weaken to Category 2 just before landfall, then that's all the merrier, but... I think we will be looking at a significant hurricane impact on the coast of the Florida Panhandle somewhere <clears throat> tomorrow daytime. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Um, how much will it affect Hattiesburg where Noah lives? Who just sent in that comment there uh, in Mississippi. Now I'm not entirely sure brushing up on my geography around the world. Uh, Hattiesburg's quite a bit inland. Okay, so uh, I would say percentage chances for tropical storm conditions there are pretty low. Given that it's on the western side of the storm, um, rainfall amounts probably won't be too high either. Storm surge won't be an issue very much along the coast, but could have some minor storm surge and coastal flooding. That is unless the storm goes significantly west of forecast which at the moment I'm still not seeing, not seeing it. Uh, let's see here, where is Cyclone Titli? T-I-T-L-I, that's the new named storm in the North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal. Uh, we will be able to see it on the screen in a moment. Somewhere, there it is. Uh, that's how the storm is looking at the minute. Uh, night falling over there off the eastern coast of India. Um, reached tropical storm status early today. Very broad influence around it. If you look at those floaters on the right hand side, the large scale, huge influence, monsoonal storms like these, I suppose, can generate huge amounts of rain and very often India sees misery from storms, even small ones like these because of the amount of moisture around and I guess in some areas the lack of infrastructure there as well um, as it continues up towards the north and not only that but the low-lying areas as well especially um, up towards the north what is it the Ganges River Delta am I in the right part of the world whichever river delta that is um, loads of islands in Bangladesh predominantly that are extremely low lying and it is a recipe for disaster when storms go up that way and this storm could do that as well it shouldn't intensify to be a particularly strong storm but we could be looking towards high-end tropical storm status as it moves up t towards Orissa it was that was the uh, part of India that I'd forgotten earlier on in the stream okay uh Let's see what else we have. Will the speed of the storm affect its intensity in relation to Michael? Um, perhaps. It's quite f uh, quite odd, actually, the, the way it could go. If it speeds up, then the winds with its counterclockwise rotation, the winds in the northeastern quadrant would then be amplified a little bit because the storm's moving more quickly on the same token it it really is down to how much time it has to intensify it will intensify happily as long as it's got enough time so if it did slow down then it would intensify probably more than if it sped up um, however we don't expect that to happen we expect the storm to speed up gradually 
only a little bit here and there until landfall and then really start to quicken the pace as it gets swept away off towards the northeast. There's a quick look at Leslie there as you saw it. But there's the latest track map for Hurricane Michael from the National Hurricane Center. If you still haven't seen it yet, there it is. Major hurricane landfall expected. And then the storm continuing through Georgia, the Carolinas, and then off towards the northeast. I'm going to bring something else to the screen in just a moment. This is the... Uh, somewhere the HWRF rainfall expectations according to its forecast there you can see the rainfall occurring north of its projected track after it moves inland so you could be looking at maybe eight inches of rainfall in parts of central Georgia in northern South Carolina into western or central North Carolina central to eastern Virginia the Delmarva Peninsula and possibly up to four inches maybe in southern New Jersey as well. Make of that what you will, that's just a model run. Whilst we're on the HWRF, let me just get the latest just to confirm. Okay, then HWRF is going crazy with Cyclone at Tiddly, calling for a Category 4 landfall. Well, there we go. Um, although it is out on a limb, I think. Yes, very much so. Out on a limb on that one. The other models, some of them do call for a Category 1, and the uh, JTWC forecast takes it just shy of hurricane status, uh, which is probably what I would side with at the minute for Titley. Just whilst we're here, looking at Cyclone Luban, the HWRF always took it further south than the GFS, calling for a Category 2 in that latest model run. I don't foresee that happening at the moment, but it could happen. Stranger things have happened. Uh, the COTC, I have no idea what it's thinking, taking it down to Somalia. The GFS uh, calling for, yeah, just as I said earlier on, just south of Salalah, just about over the border into Yemen when it makes landfall. And for rainfall possibilities, crikey, 16 inches or more for parts of coastal Yemen there if the HWRF model plays out. That would be bad news to say the least. Leslie, I'd be curious actually, oh dear, yep, HWRF wants Leslie to turn, to do that U-turn as well, although it doesn't survive long after that U-turn, I have to say, not only that, it's calling for a Category 2 peak there, and finally onto Nadine, it hasn't mentioned it by name yet, not much to say, Weak tropical storm, short-lived, maybe not so weak, it could get to 60, 65 miles per hour, but short-lived, won't last the full five days. And here we are again with the latest imagery of Michael, seven minutes old, the latest frame on this imagery. I must say that eye is deepening in those latest frames and maybe the eye wall is coming together. Let's just go back to that other infrared view. Wow. So you're seeing near the center of the eye there that initially you had those dark blues and now you're starting to see some grays in there. And that means that the eye is certainly deepening substantially in those latest frames. Don't forget, this is just a 25-minute period on this satellite imagery that we're looking at. And I must say, I think it may have just bridged the gap and might have got to Category 3 status looking at that latest imagery. The National Hurricane Center will confirm or deny that in an hour's time on their update. But the way it's looking, it's looking like strengthening is the order of the rest of the day by the looks of things there. We've got five minutes left to run here. If you've got any questions for us, I think we'll spend those five minutes taking questions. Uh, how big will Michael's eye be? <laughs> well, that's maybe uh, one of the more difficult questions. Probably an obsolete question as well. It doesn't really matter, but... 
the way it's looking at the minute, Michael probably has... I'm not entirely sure looking at this close-up imagery. My guess, maybe 30, 30 nautical miles. Almost as large as Lake Okeechobee, anyway. <laughs> Isn't Michael the last remaining original M name? It might be, you know. I'm, I'm trying to think through them. Not very quickly. Uh... I, I, I can't remember, but I'll take your word for it if it is. Wouldn't surprise me if that is indeed the case. If the wind shear weakens and the west side expands, will it have more impact for me? In the Mississippi, that is. Um, in Mississippi, not the river. Um, well, the west side is not likely to expand very much than it already has. Uh, let's not forget the northeastern side always has the largest wind field. Um... And so, unless the storm deviates quite a lot to the west, Mississippi shouldn't have too big of an effect from the storm. Only about a 5-10% to 10 chance of tropical storm force winds. Could be some coastal problems. Uh, flash flooding, maybe. Coastal flooding, I should say. Um, but the way it's looking, you know, if you were to draw a vertical line up from the storm to the border with the Mississippi right now... I keep saying the Mississippi the border with Mississippi right now, you can see that the storm would have to move a bit further east to have any of it impacting Mississippi. But as it continues off to the north, there will be an eastward element introduced into its track. And so it probably will miss. I don't say that lightly, because things can change. Could Leslie beat Hurricane John and last over 30 days? We're wondering that, but I think the answer is going to be no. What is the likelihood of Michael being retired? Fantastic question. Um, how am I supposed to answer a question like that? Let's just wait and see. And how many feet could be possible from the storm surge? I'll just reiterate those numbers as we finish up in a few moments. Um, and I think that's about everything. So let me just reiterate what those, what all the warnings are for Michael right now as we finish up the show here. Um, so a storm surge warning for the Okaloosa Walton County line to the Ancloate River, Florida. A storm surge watch for Ancloate River to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay. The Alabama Florida border to, border to Os Okaloosa Walton County line, getting it all wrong. A hurricane warning for the Alabama-Florida border to Suwannee River, Florida. A tropical storm warning for the Alabama-Florida border to the Mississippi-Alabama border. Suwannee River, Florida to Chassahowitzka, Florida. A tropical storm watch for Chassahowitzka to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay, the Mississippi-Alabama border to the mouth of the Pearl River, and Fernandina Beach to South Sandy River, South Carolina. Um, here's, here's the storm surge numbers that you're waiting for. Indian Pass to Cedar Key, Florida, 8 to 12 feet. Okaloosa, Walton, oh, I missed one. Cedar Key to Crystal River, 6 to 8 feet. Okaloosa, Walton County Line to Indian Pass, 6 to 9 feet. Crystal River to Aripeka, Florida, 4 to 6 feet. Aripeka to Anna Maria Island, including Tampa Bay, 2 to 4 feet. The Alabama Florida border to Okaloosa, Walton County Line, 2 to 4 feet. Rainfall, Western Cuba, 4 to 8 inches, with isolated maximums of 12. The Florida Panhandle and the Big Bend, Southeast Alabama and Southern Georgia, 4 to 8 inches, up to 12. Eastern Georgia, the Carolinas, and Southern Virginia, 3 to 6 inches. The Florida Peninsula, Eastern Mid-Atlantic, and Southern New England Coast, 1 to 3 inches. So many things going on in the Atlantic and elsewhere right now, but the main feature is still Hurricane Michael. We'll have more updates throughout today. The live streaming service will be switching back to the automated feature now, which will just be swinging by showing all the latest imagery. I've... Um, I've got it on good account that people say to me that um, it's very useful even if we're not talking at that point. So we'll show up the graphics, they update automatically. And until our next live stream, which is at 7pm Eastern, I bid you goodbye for now. 
We'll see you again soon and keep tracking Michael. It's getting closer. <laughs>